Hi everybody, look at that, two lives in um, two days. Mm -hmm. So I am Nathan Chan, I am the Managing Director from Proud Fertility. Uh, Proud Fertility is a surrogacy and egg donation consultancy in Canada. And I have here a lovely, lovely pregnant surrogate. So you don't need to share your name, but um, tell us a little bit about where you are in your journey, how many weeks you are. I am 32 weeks. Um, yeah, I'm getting up there. Um, I'm going to be have going in next month for my C-section, and I'm very, very excited. Um, yeah. Should we should we stand up and show our bellies? Okay. Of course. Come back here. Yeah. Pretty big, and you're a really small gal. If I if I stood up. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm. <laughs> So definitely have a belly. You're definitely carrying. Um, are you aware if you're carrying a girl or a little boy or what's going on with that? I am, but the intended parents and I have decided to keep that on the hush-hush for a, a little while. And by a little while, I mean until the baby shows up. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So you guys all have to stay tuned and wait for pictures from yes. this proud sir. Yeah. So we're going to get right into your journey. Sure. First question we love asking is, why are you, why did you become a surrogate and what, what, caused, what, what made you make such a life-changing decision to help someone else? Right. So I was actually really fortunate to get to see someone be a surrogate while I was growing up and I always thought it was so fascinating. You're like 20 so, years old. I, I know. <laughs> no, um, she, no, she's not. She's a little <laughs> older than that. Um, yeah, but I was so fortunate to get to see this journey and I got so interested and was looking in and I very fortunately came across Nathan and Proud Fertility and I was just so excited and it just... You know, I love the idea of just being able to help another family that can't necessarily help themselves. And, you know, I have this awesome gift to give. So why wouldn't I give that to someone, you know? And you are, um, are you a single parent? Do you have any children? Like, how does that work? Right. So I am a single mom. I have a little four-year-old. And, you know, that was kind of another big prompt for this journey was, you know, I didn't have the opportunity to de develop and grow a family for myself. So, you know, it was a really good timing to just give that to someone else. So how is, and your little boy, how is he taking this? Does he know what's going on here or? It's been a really good learning experience, I think. Um, you know, I've been really lucky to get these, have get to have conversations with him and just introduce him to, you know, the baby is going to an awesome family. And I got to describe the concept of going to, you know, a same sex family as well to him. And just having these little conversations, you know, where he's asking, oh, so there's two daddies and a mummy? How, you know, trying to navigate those waters has been really, really oh, fun. Oh, so, so your, your son thinks this is a baby going to two daddies and a mommy. Yes. So <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. And so does... So is he going to meet the parents or do you think that oh, would be a possibility? Yeah, absolutely. Like we are... I was so lucky with the intended parents that they're interested in really having a connection with not just my myself but my family and getting us all involved and you know that was really fortunate and I'm really happy to have IPs like that. That's great. I'm. I always kind of wonder. I think lots of people think, oh, it's not. Do you? Do, did you have any parents um, say? Did you have any family members say, oh, that's not very fair to your child that they don't know where this baby is going off to, or is that? Is that something that um, kind of came up? I just don't know why I'm asking that. So. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely been some negativity and some backlash. I mean, one of the harsher comments I got was, you know, some people that don't necessarily understand surrogacy thinking that I'm going to be giving this baby to a baby farm or some unnamed ex-family and, such, you know, all these horrible, awful things could happen. And that was really, really difficult to hear. Um, Wait a minute. Let's, it was difficult to hear, but I need to hear it again because I've heard it once. Yes. What is the mean comment? And we are waiting to hear about your mean comment. Oh my and who gosh. was this mean comment? Who, who made such a ridiculous comment too? So it was someone that was really close to me, you know, people in my family saying that, you know, how could you have this baby that's going to go to a baby farm, you know? <laughs> I, and can't, I, I can't even stop laughing. I'm I sorry. know. I, I couldn't even wrap my head around the concept. So it wasn't just some lit person in a coffee shop you met? It was someone that I trusted, someone that I that I loved. And, you know, it's it's hard hearing those things, but it's also a learning experience. And it hasn't deterred my journey at all in teaching my son. And, you know, it's... what ha Okay, so teaching about your teaching your son, like, mm -hmm. what are some things that you are teaching him other than a same-sex couple is usually mm -hmm. two men or two women? So did you teach him any... Anything else through this journey? I mean, caring for a pregnant woman was, has been one and really expanding our family is another. Like he's so excited about these IPs and he's so excited just in general about this journey. 
So everything is good besides baby farm comment. Please don't, please don't, nobody, no, none of our surrogates at Proud Fertility or even any Canadian surrogacy agency, they're not giving babies to baby farms, just so you know. Um, but what other um, hard parts of this journey would you like to share about that you mm -hmm. kind of overcome? Um, I would say one of the hardest parts was right near the beginning um, where I ended up having a canceled cycle. And if anyone doesn't know, it's basically your uterine lining isn't quite thick enough. Um, so for in my instance, they had to redo the whole hormone cycle over again. And, you know, it's one of those things I didn't think would impact me until I was sitting in my car just in tears thinking that somehow I failed, that I messed up, like my body's not ready for this. Um, and that was really, really difficult to kind of go through. Um, but at the end of the day, like I realized, you know, it's not my body. It's, it's just happens. It's natural. And, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't make you any less of a surrogate. It doesn't make your journey any less worthwhile just because there are some delays along the way. Absolutely. So just to reiterate, a canceled cycle is, first of all, when a surrogate has to, it decides to be a surrogate, there's after medical screening, after a legal agreement, all that good stuff. Then you start doing hormonal stimulations and it's around 21, 22 days of hormonal stimulations. It's basically tricking your body and mind to think, hey, I'm supposed to be pregnant. You're supposed to be having a baby for these two men and mm -hmm. no mommy. And, mm -hmm. and then it does, you're not really meeting the optimal target during a, um, a lining check, it's an ultrasound, to measure the thickness of your uterus. And so that thickness of the uterus, like, it's supposed to be like really thick enough, thick enough to grab and yeah. stick onto your embryo. <laughs> so you've had this um, um, embryo transfer canceled before. I did, yes. And so I, I really am so happy that you're able to share that because I think that is something really relevant for other circuits to yeah. know about. And so you... And, so sad. Yeah, and I think it's really important to just not beat yourself up over it. You know, it's not something you have control over. It's not something that makes you just any less worthy of this journey. Like, just, you know, be accepting that this is what happened. And it's not the end of the world. It may feel like it for a little bit, but it, it's not. Mm -hmm. And then you went on and got pregnant with the next I transfer. Did. That's right. Next, yeah, so that's really important. Any mm -hmm. other last lessons that you can share with our, 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 our audience? Oh. Hi guys, I see some comments. Hi. Um, I would just say to stick to your journey. Like for me in particular, like having this family for someone else was so important. And I just really want to stress that you should believe in yourself, believe in your journey, you know, trust yourself in your decisions, even if there are naysayers that say things that are a little, oh, naysayers. little wild. Um, <laughs> you know, you're doing something so awesome and I feel like I'm doing something awesome and just be proud of that. You know, don't let anyone deter you from the decisions you want to make and Thank you yeah. so much for sharing. You're so natural. You're all nervous yeah. about this Facebook Live and this live. Oh, but yeah, be yourself. And um, yeah. thank you so much for being a proud surrogate, speaking out and just bringing awareness to so many facets of the surrogacy journey. If you would like to join Proud Fertility in becoming an, uh, a surrogate, or you can also join us in being an egg donor or an intended parent, we wish you really, really well. And uh, thank you for joining us today. And we are so excited and honored to help you fulfill your family dreams. Thank you so much, Thank Proud Surrogate.